<laughs> Welcome to the sneak peek webinar on Right Scan Reports and Right Time Hosted. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sue Pogocznik, and I'm the marketing manager here at RightSoft, and we'll be helping moderate today's session. Ryan Winicky, one of our RightSoft implementation and support specialists, will be the presenter today. First, Ryan's going to talk about the new reporting functionality that we're rolling out for RightScan and how it works with our new palette tracking module. Then he'll give you a brief demonstration. Next, he'll talk about the online version of RightTime that we have in development and we'll give you a brief demonstration to show you where we're headed. After that, Ryan will briefly highlight what's next on our development roadmap. At the end of the webinar, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions. Feel free to submit your questions via the chat window at any time during the webinar. If you have any technical issues, you can submit them through the chat window as well. Without further ado, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Ryan. Ryan? Thank you, Sue, and thanks for everyone joining us today. So just to kind of kick things off, it's no secret that today's manufacturers need to invest in areas that will improve their productivity and speed of responsiveness in orders to achieve their real growth targets. Our clients and manufacturers really indicated that their top operational challenges include improving production processes, strengthening customer relationships, and really finding enough people with the right skills and talent, increasing their labor productivity. Plus, they're also facing the higher labor and material costs, and this sounds familiar to a lot of our customers probably. To really help address these issues, an industry week survey of manufacturers indicates that manufacturers are investing in technology to better align labor and production capabilities and budgeting and forecasting systems. Workforce labor management systems and performance dashboards. And that's what really leads us to our discussion of the enhancements we're making in right skin in right time that we'll be talking about today. In order to really help improve processes, customers have been asking for right skin to have the capability to run reports on transaction data in real time. As a first step towards that, we've added high level transaction reports to right skin. We've kept a very similar look and feel with the organization screens and the administrator and supervisor functions to be able to navigate quickly and find the data that they need that's most relevant to them. Some of the examples of the different types of reports that we're introducing are the ability to look at transactional reports by employee or by certain transactions in your warehouse over a period of time. The other thing that we're introducing is pallet reports. And pallet reports really falls into the category with our new pallet tracking fu functions that we've introduced into RightScan over the last year and a half. So if you're not familiar with the pallet tracking functions, it really comes down to the ability for operators to more easily and rapidly move items with fewer scans by grouping those items to some sort of pallet or container. The transactions can then be performed with a single process of a scan and RightScan's automatically going to know where the pallet exists, the stock codes that are contained on that pallet, the quantities, and even the bins or lots and serials that are associated with it. So it really simplifies the process from an operator perspective, being able, able to simply scan one barcode and RightScan knows all the correct information. So where does this really play into some of your customers' operations? Do they receive items onto pallets or do they store pallets of mixed inventory items? Do they move items around by bulk transactions by some sort of pallet level? Or maybe they're even already labeling those pallets and just not consuming them in any sort of fashion. It can also play into the different manufacturing processes. For example, staging materials for a specific job and then being able to scan that pallet and issue all the materials at once. Uh, or being able to receive finished goods on a pallet so they can be moved into a put away location later on as well, all with one simple scan. So that's what really brings in the introduction of reports and pallet reports and transaction reports. So with all that being said, let's take a look at what that looks like within the new RightScan reporting application. So when we take a look at the right scan reporting. I'm just going to switch my screen here. Give me just a moment. 
It's actually going to be a web application. So very similar to the right scan admin, it's going to be installed on your CISPRO server and supervisors or operators can simply access it by just going to the web browser link here that they can navigate to this URL. So to set this up within your system, we can simply go into the settings page here. And it's only going to ask for two pieces of information. The first is going to be your URL. Now this is the same URL that uh, your customers are using to log in to WriteScan. They're just going to copy that URL into the settings page here, and then they'll select the company that they want to look at the data for. So we're going to go into company zero here. We can go ahead and save those settings. So when we take a look at reports, the first report we're going to look at is our transactional report. So with the transaction, there's kind of two different ways to look at the data set. The first is going to be by transaction types. So I can see all the different types of transactions that are happening over a specific date and time period that I select. So I'm looking at this week so far. And we can see specifically all the different transactions that are occurring. So you start to see a pattern of what are the most common transactions, which ones are happening most. And then you can also see the data that makes up all of this. So I can see specifically what operator, what type of transaction, and when it happened within my operations. And all of this data can be sorted and grouped and filtered. Now you can also see here at the top, they can export this to a PDF or export it to Excel if they want to do any other further modifications to it. Excel really provides you that full line of what you want to do with the data. So the other way that we can actually look at this transactional data is by users. If we want to start to compare users and see which users are performing what transactions, which ones are performing the most transactions. I can now start to see each of the different operators and how many transactions they're performing in a date and time period. And then also what types of transactions are they doing sales order picking? Are they doing warehouse transfers, bin transfers, issuing materials to jobs, job receipts, and so on. It really gives you that complete visibility on how you want to start to see some of that transactional data to help improve your decision making to know what's going on within your operations. The other thing that we're going to take a look at is from a pallet perspective. So with the introduction of pallets, one of the things that customers have been looking for from RightScan is the ability to start to report and gain a new insight into that pallet information that's held only within RightScan because pallet tracking is a feature that's above and beyond CISPRO. It's just held within RightScan. So what we've introduced now is the ability to start to report on that data. So within here, you can see that I can see all of my different pallets that I have in inventory. We can see the different statuses, the different locations, what warehouse they're in, what bin they're in, if it's a multi-bin company as well. Um, you can notice that ones that are in a status, for example, stage for whip, doesn't necessarily have a uh, location because it's actually already issued to the job. You can group and filter all of this information. So if I was looking uh, for a specific palette, I can go ahead and search for that. I can type in my palette I'm looking for. And RightSeon is going to show me that information. This palette here, it's in status one in inventory in warehouse E, bin location E. Um, now, if I wanted to group this information because I want to see specifically what pallets I have in each warehouse, I can start to see all of that data. So we can take a look at my warehouse FG, each of the different pallets that I have within my warehouse FG. A lot of times customers will also want to take it one step further and they'll want to start to see all of the information that makes up a pallet. So when we look at the pallet items report here, it lets me go one level further. So now let's say I want to look at each of my different pallets and then the items on each of those pallets. So here I can see my pallet one has three different items of different quantities uh, associated in my inventory. Now if I wanted to look for pallets that contain a certain stock code maybe, I can go ahead and actually search for that. So if I want to see pallets that contain stock code lot 100, we can see that information in my inventory now. Now, if I wanted to go one step further and I wanted to find pallets that uh, contained a specific lot number, I can also go one step further and we're going to go, let's look for pallets that contain lot 100 and then also lot number 102, 418. 
So now I can see I have two pallets in my inventory that contain this stock code and this lot number. And I can also see the quantities and the locations associated with those. So it really allows you the flexibility to filter down into what's the information you're looking to accomplish and how can we help provide that to you to go find those items or to see what I might need to do with those. If I'm picking pallets for sales orders, you can also see what sales orders that it was picked for or if it was sent out in a goods in transit, I can see what that goods in transit reference number is. It really gives you that complete visibility of your pallet data and all the items and inventory that are contained on those pallets as well. So that's a quick look at the new pallet or right scan reporting application. And there's a lot to come with this as well. This is kind of our first step of gaining some of the feedback of our customers and see how we can even add more value to our customers. With that being said, I'm gonna bounce back to the PowerPoint here. And we're gonna take a look at the new right time hosted application that we're introducing and currently working on as well. So with the right time hosted application, uh, it is a browser based application. So what that means for your customers is uh, the updates are automatic, it stays up to date and they get the latest enhancements and features uh, because it is just a web application, all that information is readily available at their fingertips. They don't have to manage it on their own hardware. Uh, they can simply just, as long as they have access to the web, they're able to get into right time. They don't have to spend IT hours on setting this up on their own SQL or uh, their own servers internally that are hosting the application and managing all the different clients and devices. It's simply a web browser application. Operators can just navigate to their uh, app and start using it wherever they may be. This also introduces a new benefit, allowing operators to capture time outside of just the four walls of the business. Uh, we work with a lot of customers that it just doesn't stop at the four walls of their business. It's going outside of that too, being able to capture time for installing a specific machine that was manufactured or if we manufacture countertops, being able to capture time on how long it takes to install those countertops. So there's a lot of new uses for right time that can also be benefited from outside of just the actual manufacturing operations as well. What this also means, being it's a web application, the devices is unlimited. You have a complete flexibility being able to run it on different tablets, different uh, PCs or Android tablets, iPads, whatever that device may be, it's simply as long as I have the ability to get to a web browser, now I can have access to right time as well, which really helps with customers reducing that price point and not needing to buy extra hardware just for this. So with that, let's talk a little bit about what that actually looks like and where our development team is going with our right time hosted application. So I'm gonna actually open up uh, our right time hosted application. The very first thing that we're going to take a look at is the dashboards. Uh, the dashboards provide supervisors uh, insights into what's going on in real time on their shop floor. It allows them the flexibility to be able to see what employees are clocked in, uh, what departments are, are working on different jobs. I can see how many active jobs I may have in my warehouse or operations or what might have been completed within the last 24 hours as well. It's really exciting because, excuse me, what this allows operators to do or supervisors to do is build out their own snapshots or widgets, they may call them as well, uh, to be able to see what data is specific to them. They can build reports and put those into a quick snapshot that they can see on their dashboard to know exactly what information is most relevant to them and their business and their operations that they're managing. So it really gives them that complete flexibility to see the data that they need to see, see the data that they can drill into to effectively make a decision uh, as well within their operations, not having to go walk the actual manufacturing floor. From an employee perspective, this allows uh, supervisors to view all of the different employees. Now, if they're a supervisor of a specific department, they're only gonna see their departments, but maybe I'm a supervisor of multiple. I can drill into, I only wanna look at my assembly department employees. So within here, we really try to give the supervisors as much information as they can 
uh, to see what they need to see. So for example, they can see their employees' productivity, their total hours for the time period, and how many hours they actually spent on tasks as well to really see what that productivity is. Maybe I only wanna see people that are clocked in for the day, so that's what I'm seeing here as well. There are times though, if any of this information doesn't look quite right or you wanna see even further details, they can actually drill into the details for this uh, employee as well. And it's gonna give them all the information they need. They're able to see what their productivity looked like over this time period, to see any sort of trends with that. Uh, their total hours, how many they produced, and all the really data that makes up this. So I can see all of their different work records of what jobs they worked on, how much time they spent. If I need to edit or add entries because they forgot to clock in, I can also do that right from here, managing that information to really see everything I need about an employee. From a jobs perspective, um, it allows you to see what's going on on your shop floor from jobs. Know what's in the queue, what needs to be worked on, what's currently being worked on that might not quite get done in time to go out the door. So from this perspective, you can search your list of jobs to narrow in on a specific job. If I wanna see jobs that are maybe active or new or complete, I can also see just that information. Well, we're gonna take a look at a, different, a job in the list here. We're gonna look at job 545. So we can see uh, the number of tasks that have been completed, its status, but we're gonna drill into the details one step further. So when I take a look one step further, I can start to see, do I need to adjust my end date maybe, or do I need to adjust the uh, total hours, I can see each of the specific operations that make up this job. So there's three operations on this job. I can also add a task if I needed to add a task to this job as well. Um, I can see what different people have worked on this job. So here you can see both Heather's worked on it as well as Joseph uh, for different time periods or if I needed to add a work record because uh, somebody worked on it but didn't capture their time. But let's actually go in and take a look one step further at a specific operation. So if we look at the details of an operation, uh, in here you can see each of the different work records that make up this operation. Uh, if I assign it to any departments or employees, that can be uh, done here as well. So that way employees will only see uh, jobs that come in their department or assigned to them specifically. We can set total hours versus expected hours, so I start to understand how far, how well we did on this specific operation. And rates, so if I'm also understanding, if I'm supposed to be producing 10 uh, widgets over a 10 hour period, I can start to see, am I doing well? Is my efficiency good or bad uh, for this specific operation? Taking it back one step, one of the things that we also want to introduce is we're starting to move towards that trend of digitization and what does that look like? Um, when you start to introduce that, uh, people don't necessarily always want to let go of that paper. So we've also kept in some of the similarities, being able to get to a traveler view that gives you that very familiar paper traveler uh, that I work on daily uh, and I work against. So I can see specific notes that have been captured. Uh, for this traveler. I can see the job information, maybe the customer information, stock code, and so on. And each of the specific operations, this could be printed off very quickly. So what this really tries to do is give you all the information you need about those jobs right at your fingertips. So on the flip side, we also have employee time cards. If I'm a supervisor of a department, I wanna see my employees' transactions. I wanna see what they were doing. Maybe I even have a process for approving those transactions. Now that can all be done right from here in the employee time card view. So if we wanna look at Amy's for specifically here, uh, we're gonna look at Amy's time card and we're gonna look at it for the work week here. Uh, just business hours. So when we look at their time card, uh, we're gonna take a look and make sure that, let me get to the right week here. There we go. Uh, we're gonna see all the different transactions that make up this time card. So at this point, I can see that when they clocked in, the different jobs that they worked on, uh, and I can also see the actual data set that makes that up. So if I had to add or delete or edit any of these because something might not be quite right, 
I can see their total work hours, their total time clock hours, and ensure that everything is good on this time card before I actually approve it here and approve all the transactions for this specific time card. So it just gives you a quick view to go through your list of employees and start to see any of their information and quickly approve those transactions as well. Some of the other things that you can do is set up different types of breaks. So if I wanna set up uh, breaks for operators, it could be paid breaks or unpaid breaks. I can also schedule those breaks. So that way operators don't necessarily have to actually go manually clock out to break. If I know that at nine o'clock for this department, they're always gonna be clocking out for a 15 minute break, we can just do that automatically now for them and they can deduct that time. The system takes care of deducting that time from both their time card uh, as well as the job they may have been working on over that time period as well. So it really helps automate some of those practices. Uh, you can also set up security groups to have different permission levels for your different sorts of uh, operators, whether it's a supervisor permissions group, an employee, maybe the line leads have different permissions as well. Uh, all that can be configured here within your system. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so the other thing that we didn't talk much about yet is the ability to actually capture that time for employees that are starting to capture this. So the my jobs view here, uh, so employees may only see my jobs and their time card. In this view, it really gives you all of the jobs that are available to work on. So if I assign jobs to departments or employees, I'm only gonna see the jobs that are available in my department uh, or assigned directly to me. At this point here, an operator can search for a job that they wanna begin working on. I can see job 525 has three different operations. Once I select start here, I can start working on this job. We're gonna go ahead and start this task. And you're gonna notice it goes into my list up here. Once it goes into my list, um, I can view notes for this specific job. So if I go into the notes here, I can see notes that somebody might have left over this job. Uh, at this point, I can add a new note if I had to add any sort of new notes to this job as well. Uh, same goes for attachments. If I wanted to add an attachment to this, I could add a picture of this or a diagram that maybe gets referenced in the production process, all right here available to the operators. They can also drill into the details of that operation, which I was showing you in the jobs view earlier. Once they're done with this, they can stop a job or cancel it if they accidentally clocked into this and didn't want to capture their time. If they're capturing uh, maybe good quantity or scrap quantity, they can capture that along the way as this job is running as well. We're gonna go ahead and stop this job. And then it's gonna go out of my list and I could begin working on my next thing. Now what I'm showing you here is much more of a work center terminal. This is where I work, this is up all day, um, and I'm working in this application. Some people, however, will use what we call quick start. And what quick start is much more of a terminal based method of I want my operators to clog in, lock in, log into the system, uh, start working on their job and get out as fast as possible. So this is much more of a scanning application, being able to scan my username. Oops, let's do that correctly here. I can scan my username, I can scan my password, uh, and go ahead and log right into the system. Once I log in, I can begin working on a job. So if I'm in for day or out for day, I can clock in or out. Uh, I can also begin working on a job by selecting start here. And I can go ahead and scan the job if I have a traveler that I'm working off of, scan that right into the system, scan the task that I'm working on. Right is gonna validate that information. We wanna start this task. And then we can go ahead and select start and it's gonna begin working on that for me. Uh, so it's a much quicker process being able to quickly just scan into the application, scan out, and I can log out uh, for the next person to come in right at that time as well. So it's all the same benefits of being able to capture time, uh, just much more of a terminal-based quick scan in, scan out sort of application. So that kind of gives you a quick insight into Write Time Online and some of the features and functions and direction that it's going. 
uh, as well. So we're going to go back into the demonstra or the PowerPoint here. And let's talk a little bit, uh, as we're kind of coming into the end of the year here, we're approaching uh, the end of the year, and we want to sum up what has RightSoft done with RightScan over the last year, and what's on the roadmap for some of the next things to come as well. So, you know, we've really done a lot with RightScan over the last year. Android is one of the big things that we've actually completed. Uh, we've introduced the Android application for RightScan that opens the devices up quite a bit. So whether you want to purchase handheld devices running Android or tablets, uh, now you're able to run RightScan on that, uh, which gives you much more flexibility with those devices at a price point, uh, some of the features that Android offers as well. We've also introduced a new module for dispatch notes. Uh, this module uh, generates a dispatch note directly from RightScan. It allows operators to follow a very similar process flow to order picking, to pick each of the lines that they're going to end up dispatching. And at the end of that, they can actually generate the dispatch directly from RightScan into Cisco. So and it helps with a lot of people's workflows that are using dispatch notes for picking. We've also introduced the back order release process into our order picking module. Uh, previously, the order picking module didn't allow for back order release. We're now able to actually perform that order picking process and do a back order release when the operator is complete with that. Um, if you haven't had a chance uh, as a partner to check out the palette staging or palette tracking functions of RightScan, we've done a lot with palette staging. Uh, being able to build some of those operator workflows into the process for staging pallets, whether it be uh, building a pallet from inventory so I can do a movement and move it to a new warehouse, or maybe I'm building a pallet for a specific job, so guiding the operator through, here's each of the material allocations to pick for this job, and we're going to build a pallet out of that. And the same goes for sales orders. Maybe I'm building a pallet for a specific sales order. And it allows you to guide the operator through that workflow. And then at the end of that, what sort of transaction do we want to do with the pallet? Do we want to move it to a new warehouse? Do we want to issue these materials to the job? Or do we want to pick this pallet for this specific sales order? Whatever that might be. Uh, we've made new enhancements to the order picking module with the ability to browse for bins, lots, and cereals. We've also introduced browse functionality for purchase orders and jobs. Uh, all the different modules of RightScan, now you can just browse for those specific orders that I might be looking at. Uh, whereas previously, you might have had to always scan that information into the system. Uh, we've also continued to roll out custom form fields, uh, adding the ability to capture custom form fields with PO receipts as well as job receipts, some of those examples. Uh, are capturing quality uh, results when I'm doing a PO inspect or a PO, uh, or I might be capturing a specific customer reference number when I'm doing a job receipt. So we've also introduced uh, many new plugins for specific customers. If you're not familiar with plugins, there are customizations that we can build out specifically for customers based on their requirements. Some of the different plugins that we've done over the last year are. Uh, sales order picking, capturing a start and stop time so the customer can actually report on how long it takes an operator to pick a specific order. Uh, we've done things with generating specialized serial numbers during different transactions like job receipts or back flushing. We've built a plugin for enforcing uh, picking with FIFO uh, at the time of pick and then if the operators don't pick the correct lot number. Uh, they actually have to supply a reason code that's sent into CISPRO. So there's a lot of different types of plugins that we've been able to develop to help customers solve some of their challenges within their operations that they might not have been able to solve with standard RightScan. We've also introduced the Spanish and Chinese language packages into RightScan, uh, allowing you to roll out RightScan into maybe a different facility that has a different language, uh, whether it might be Spanish or Chinese. So we also want to talk about uh, what's on the roadmap next for right scan. So some of the things that we're working on is enhancing the reporting functions, uh, bringing a little bit more information to customers for that reporting. 
along with we're in the process of testing uh, CISPRO version 8 compatibility. Uh, it's looking very good right now with right scan and being compatible with CISPRO 8. Some of the things that we have done with right time over the last year have been uh, we're currently in the process of our right time hosted project here that we're working on that we talked about today. Uh, in our right time application, we introduced badge ID login scanning, uh, reporting enhancements, as well as quick start capabilities. We've added some more enhancements to that quick start function. Uh, we also want to talk about what's next on our roadmap with right time. Of course, we talked about the hosted uh, version. Uh, but we've also are looking to add in dashboards that can display certain KPIs and different uh, dashboards for shop floor monitors. So everyone on the shop floor can see what's going on uh, in the operations to see who's clocked into what sorts of jobs and really providing our customers the flexibility to set up those dashboards to the information that's most relevant to their shop floor and how they can configure that uh, to display that data as well. With all of that exciting news, we're going to roll into uh, the questions now as well. Okay, Ryan, it looks like we have a couple of questions here regarding reports. The first one is, will there be additional software or hardware requirements in order to use RightScan reports? So with the re RightScan reports application, it is just a web application. So it's installed with your standard RightScan. And when you install it on the server, uh, it's going to work very similar to the admin. So you don't have to have any extra hardware applications that we install on it. Uh, they can just navigate to that web browser uh, URL, and they're going to be able to start using that reports utility. OK. The next question is, when will the reporting functionality be available? So the right scan reporting functionality is actually currently available to customers. So if you don't have access to it today, uh, you can update to the latest version of right scan. I believe right now it's 6.50.17. And that will actually contain an installer for the right scan reporting function. Okay. This earlier you mentioned that RightScan reports works with the pallet tracking module. Are the pallet tracking and reporting modules included in the standard license of RightScan? So the RightScan reporting function is not an additional uh, cost. It's actually included in the standard RightScan application. Uh, so if you've purchased the full system or one of our packages, you do have access to the RightScan reporting application. Uh, the pallet tracking uh, feature, however, is an additional feature that is an add-on for an additional fee. Okay. The last question that we have here is regarding RightTime Online. When is the online version of RightTime going to be available? Right now, we are currently uh, working on testing with beta testers coming up here in the end of the year into Q1. So uh, dependent upon that, we're expecting that we should have right time hosted application available to customers in early Q2 of okay. next year. Thank All you. right. Well, that looks like that's the end of our questions. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone taking the time to join us today. And uh, there's a lot of new exciting things on the roadmap of RightScan and RightSoft here. So if you guys have any questions or feedback on what we've talked about today, we're happy to hear that. Uh, you can re uh, contact me at my contact information there. And I appreciate everyone joining us today. Thank you.